Heavy metal rock. Global mind. And today on My Global Mind, we are speaking with Kevin Martin of Candlebox for the release of their new and final album, The Long Goodbye, which just came out a couple of days ago, August 25th. Kevin, thank you and welcome. Oh, my pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. Great album. Thank you. Thank it's sad, you. but great at the same time. Is that possible? <laughs> now, you know what happens. It's happened to me before and, and uh, with the bands that I've enjoyed listening to. So, yeah, I think it is possible. Yeah, for fans, definitely, right? It's kind of like, wow, this is, is this a parting gift for the fans before you leave? Well, I don't know if it's a parting gift. It's a, some of our fans are a little upset that it's only 35 minutes long. But um, I think it's, you know, it's really just a way of just I wanted to end my career uh, on a record that we did whatever we wanted. And we made the, the music that we wanted to make. And without really any concern as to whether there's a hit on it or there's a you know a, a label favorite or there's a fan favorite it really was we love these songs yeah and this is what we want to put out and um and that's a really it's a very good feeling and it's and it's incredibly freeing <laughs> yes. you know i mean i've i've always had to worry about whether i had a single or something on a record and and it's nice not to have to do that so is it a parting gift maybe it is or maybe it's just a way of saying hey this is where we were always headed and thanks for letting us be in your lives for 30 years hope you enjoy the record there's some great diversity on the album too. I really like the flow of the album. I like, you know, from punks to ugly maze, great stuff and real diverse. Is that important to you when you're putting out an album? It has been, I think since really since into the sun in 2008 is it's always been important for me to push the band as far as it can go every single record and always introduce something new per record, which allows you to move into that direction. Like love stories and other musings is a perfect example of, a great distance, uh, you know, songwriting style for this band, and and we pushed ourselves really far on that record to open ourselves up for disappearing in airports. So, you know, it's always been um, it's always been my kind of concept to to make sure that there's something different there for everybody. Yeah, no, it's a great album, and I, I do appreciate that. Also, what what comes across on all your work, your bodies of work, is the extreme energy and that you and it, to seek the ultimate expression in songs and music. Uh, and the long, you know, and the long goodbye is no different. What what do you think drives that artistic work ethic to always deliver something so so unique? Um, God, man, probably just comes from my dad. You know, I was I was raised by a, a, a very disciplined, res, you know, respectful, responsible father. Yeah, and yeah. and and he adored my mother, and they were married for forty two years before he passed away at the age of eighty one. They were twenty years apart in age. Wow. Um, but, you know, I, he just was such a, he was a great dad, you know, and um, he was always just really supportive. And, and but he said to me several times, you know, even when I started sports, I had two older brothers and an older sister. I was the youngest of four. And he's like, don't try and be your brothers, you know, be yourself, get out there and, you know, put every ounce of energy you have into this. If this is the sport you're going to play, you need to be your very best at it. And, and that's all that you can hope for. And I've just never forgotten that, you know, um, and I think that I've always tried to, I love singing, you know, I don't want to be a lead singer in a rock band until I'm singing and then I love singing, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's, it's just, it's, it's strange. I'm a, I'm a case study for, I, I should, you know, probably see a therapist at some yes. point about it. But, <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I, I get so into it. And I really, really love it. And doing this record with Don Miggs, our producer is a really great friend of mine. I mean, there's melody on this record that I, it's melodies that I would never have sung before. And he was really good about pushing me in those directions. And, and when I get excited about it, that's when I'm like, okay, now I've got to make this absolutely the very best. And that's, that's why every Candlebox record, there's not, I don't think there's a dud on any of them Yeah, um, I because I just enjoy, I enjoy it. I can feel the positive and hear the positive energy on this album. So, you know, it was, I thought it was a well job, well done. Um, what's your plans for retirement? Well, I have a bourbon that's coming out next year. 
um, with a buddy of mine, Nick. Um, it's called Mona. Uh, I've got my foundation called Riptide Society, which is for at-risk youth and young adults in the foster care system. Um, my wife has a clothing line that we're launching a men's menswear division of that next year. So I'm, I'm helping her with some of the designs of that. Yeah. Um, you know, so really just a lot of things that I've been waiting to do for a long, long time. And I, you know, I made a decision during COVID that I didn't want to retire and have 10 years to enjoy my life. I wanted to make sure that I at least had 30 years if, if, if I had that. And so it was, it's a conscious decision. I mean, and when you work really hard, a lot of people would say, well, being a musician is kind of like being retired and, and, and it's the best job in the world. It's, it's exhausting. I mean, I've been on the road since May 29th and, um, and I'm beat to shit. I mean, I'm, I'm 54 years old. I haven't done this kind of touring since I was in my twenties, you know? So that's like, I just don't want to be a casualty. You know, I, I want to be a father and a husband and I want to live the rest of my life in, in the way that I want to live it. And I don't love music the way I used to love it. That's, you know, that's another thing that's, I don't want to be somebody who's phoning it in. You know what I mean? So I guess the, the, the joy of this album and the positive energy, this record has given me such a great emotional boost to do what I'm doing right now. I'm sure I'm going to crash and burn when this tour is over and and I'm going to, you know, be an emotional wreck, but um, you know, I just, I I know that the future is very, very bright for me and and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. sounds like you got some great things planned. Is that last show? I was October 21st. Is that going to be a really emotional show for you? Because that's the last show. I don't know. Um, I mean, I've got, I've got the, Seattle show, which is going to happen next year um, with the original band, um, which is going to be with the Seattle Symphony. We're working on that now. That's probably going to be, for me, the big one because, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I I said goodbye to Barty and Scott years ago. I mean, even though they, we still get together and play shows, they're not in the band. They haven't been in the band since the 90s. Pete left in 2015, you know, um, it's, it's kind of like that's going to be more emotional for me because I'm, I'm really putting the whole thing away with those guys. And that's who I started this with. So I think that's probably going to be the one, but I know that, you know, Island and, and Adam and Brian and I, you know, South America is a really special place for us. So we'll probably do something special for that last show in South America, which will just be, you know, a blowout sort of thing. Um, maybe like a two and a half hour set or something ridiculous. <laughs> and, and then I'll, I'll, I'll probably just at that point, I'll kind of absorb everything that's happening to me. Have fans been expressing their love and, you know, heartfelt devotion to you guys at the shows and the meet and greets? Oh, it's been amazing. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it, it, you know, a lot of people can't believe that this is it, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and that's a, you know, I mean, it's a harsh reality for some of our fans. I think that's kind of the strangest thing is because they've counted on Candlebox for 30 years to give them yes. something to look forward to. Very true. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I just don't, I'm so grateful that, that I've had this opportunity, you know, um, and I hope they understand that this is just where I've got to go. It's what I've got to do for me. Yeah. And that's fair. You know, and I have to ask this, but so many bands have redefined the word farewell, you know, that it's really not applicable. Is this a real farewell for you? It is. Yeah. There'll never be another Candlebox record. Um, there'll never oh. be another Candlebox store. Yeah. I, I I don't even know if I'll make music anymore. I've been asked to produce some records next year, which I'll probably do because I love doing that. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I won't I won't make any more music. Wow. That's really interesting. I didn't expect that that from you. I figured, you know, there was still a passion, I guess, beyond it. Maybe down the road, maybe <coughs> you get some take a time from it. You take a break from it a couple of years and then you say, hey, I got an idea. Yeah, I mean, and that happens, you know, and, and and I would not be afraid of that at all. You know, I would I would welcome that um, if it did. But, I, you know, like I said, I just don't love the music the way I used to. And and that's a strange place for me to be because I've loved music since I can remember walking. You know, um, it's it has been my savior, you know, umpteenth times. And um, and it just feels weird to not be in love with it anymore. Yeah. You know, with a 30 year career, how much of your success do you attribute to hard work practice? And then how much of it do you attribute to luck and just good fortune? Wow. Probably 50, yeah. 50. Um, yeah. Because, you know, I, I, we were in the right place at the right time back in 1993, you know, um, when that record came out being from Seattle and, you know, having some pretty great friends there that, that helped us get to where we got, um, you know, that was incredibly fortunate for us. It did not need to happen. And it certainly wasn't a guarantee. Um, and, and, you know, not to say that we didn't work our asses out because we did. I mean, 
we wrote the debut album over the course of a year, essentially. Um, and when Barty joined in that October of, or November of, of uh, 93 or 91, um, that's when we started writing more music. And so it really was just a kind of a magical time for us. And, but at some point, I think we lost our, we lost our drive. We lost that, that lust and, and desire we had to be super creative. And I don't know if that's just the distractions of, you know, the music business and, and drugs and alcohol and money and all that sort of shit. Yeah. Or if it was that we really didn't know one another and we had done what we were able to do uh, for that period. And, you know, I think sometimes, you know, I, I don't know if you know the story, but I only knew Scott, the drummer, um, but we'd never played in a band together and didn't know Pete, didn't know Barty. Barty didn't know anybody, you know, vice versa, all four of us. So we're like a happy accident. Yeah. And I think that when it came time to start writing for Lucy, we had been through so much together as a band, but we didn't really know how to deal with one another because we weren't friends and we were learning about one another on the road. And that's a hard place to live. Yeah. Um, certainly with, yeah, you know, you got somebody who's like an alcoholic and, you know, cocaine head. It's, that's not somebody you want to be around unless you're the same person. Right, you know? right, right. And or just so even it, on the bus, just the, even on the bus with four individual guys, it's like, oh my God, what a mess, you know? So I think that, you know, we had, by the time we started writing for Lucy, we had probably run the actual emotional, physical course with one another that we could. And at that point it was like, well, what do we do? And how are we going to survive this? And so there was a lot of conversation um, in the studio when we were making that record about how and what we needed to do to actually try and be a band. Um, and then sadly, when, you know, Scott left after the Lucy tour and um, Dave Cruzen joined us, uh, I think everybody was at that point just kind of strained and, and, and estranged a little bit. But even though we we're in the same room working together, um, there just was no conversation. And that's unfortunate. You know, I think that was a, a really hard thing for us. So the hard work paid off, but then it stopped, sadly. Yeah. What made you want to carry on after all of that? Well, I mean, there's, it's a brand at that point, you know, yeah. and, um, and I still loved the music. I loved the, the first three records we made. Um, not crazy about Lucy, but there's songs on Lucy that I absolutely adore. And I knew that there was more music to be made for us. I just had to figure out how I could get the band to work together again. And that didn't happen until 2007 when we started writing for Into the Sun. And of course, Into the Sun, a lot of people consider that to be our second best record ever made. But that was it was a very um, very controlled environment. I mean, that was me and Pete. We we hunkered down for about six months and wrote that record. I mean, just by hand, really. Like we, I was so adamant about how we were going to get these songs done. And then Barty was really great. His input when the songs were in in um, kind of in a good working form with lyric. Barty was just a magic. At, at, at taking them and, and writing great bridges and, and great hooks for choruses. So, but it it had to be Pete and I, and, and I knew that. And I think Barty did as well. I don't know if he was happy about it, but um, Pete and I just, we had that energy and connection in the studio writing that um, that we needed. That's great. That's great. I, I want to be respectful to your time. I have one last question. No, 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 it's good. Yeah. Um, all said and done, what legacy do you think the band will have left on grunge? Well, wow. you know, I don't know. Um, I've been asked that a lot. I don't, I don't know. Um, I think that's going to have to be up to the fans to decide what our legacy is. I, 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 I would hope that it's something like, you know, they were the the little band from Seattle that could, and they mm -hmm. did, um, because there was there was so much stacked against us. I mean, we got you know no fucking respect from that, you know, from our older brothers in the city musically. Yeah. And, um, and it was hard, you know, a lot of days where I was like, fuck this, this is bullshit. We're from this fucking town. Why can't we get any fucking respect? Um, but I understand it now. You know, we were young kids. Nobody knew who we were. We came out of nowhere. You know, when, I'm five years in age younger than Chris Cornell, you know, five years in age younger than Jerry, five years in age younger than Lane. So I was a teenager when those guys were playing the Central Tavern and the Vogue and all that shit. You yeah. know? So, so I understand it now. But at the time, it was very frustrating. You know, so I, I would hope that our legacy is something like they're a great band from Seattle, make some great fucking records, give them a listen. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, um, I'm I'm really into hard rock, heavy metal, grew up listening to that. I have a lot of bands that I love like yours. Um, 
The biggest thing about grunge is everybody says it killed hard rock and heavy metal, commercial, glam metal. What's your take on that? I disagree. I think that it it stalled it for a bit because, you know, I mean, it's like the brand new thing. It's like a brand new iPhone now, you know. Um, it's it's the world was hungry for a little bit of a change and and it, it was okay because, you know, Guns N' Roses still continue to, you know, continue to put out great rock record yeah. uh, shortly after grunge killed the industry. Um, and there's been some amazing, really amazing metal records that have come out over the years. I think it just was taken out of the spotlight, you know? Um, and, and that's what happens, you know? I mean, the sixties folk scene was squashed by, you know, heavy metal or rock and roll right. uh, in the late sixties, early seventies. And, and but it continued to flourish and it's still to this day one of the greatest movements of music and it's and there's still a lot of folk artists out there that, that create great folk music so um i think that it just stalled it for a bit and the, and the attention shifted and that's really my take you know um i mean of course you know poison stopped teasing their hair up but they still <laughs> made rock records you know right. i mean it's it's just everybody's like oh maybe we need to calm it down a little bit or we can still produce so yeah I, I agree with you because i think there was a lot of um repetitiveness and similarities every band looked the same you could have interchanged members you could have interchanged songs you know as a joke and it would nobody would know <laughs> the difference so yeah i think it, it's kind of a wake-up call i think it, it shook it up and i think you know the hardcore Bands, Maiden, Priest, like you said, Metallica, you know, Poison, they kept going. They still, you know, Brett Michaels is still out there touring and he's yeah. still doing what people what people want to hear and what love. But I think, yeah. well, Def I think, right, I think it got rid of all those copycat guys. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, I want to wish you the best on, on your retirement in the last couple of shows that you have. So and I want to thank you so much for your time for such an insightful and interesting interview. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Robert. It's been a pleasure, man. Yeah, have a great day. Bye bye. All right, we'll see you. Bye. Heavy metal rock. Oh, oh my.